Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. We want to appreciate the Most High God for His faithfulness, for His mercies, for our opportunity, our privilege to have our Sunday school class today. Amen. But before we start, shall we say a word of prayers? Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you for your loving kindness. We bless you, our Father and our God, for who you are and for the things you do. Thank you, O oh God, for the privilege to behold it another in the land of living. We give you all the glory. Father, we'll commit this long job and we'll ask, O oh God, that in your mercy you have your way. Teach us yourself, O oh God. And at the end, O oh God, your name alone shall be glorified. For in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today we are looking at lesson 40 that says, The preaching of the gospel. Lesson 40, the preaching of the gospel. The week before, we had a review, quarterly review of what we did in, in the third quarter. So today we are taking it up from lesson 40, the preaching of the gospel. Praise the Lord. And our text for today is from Mark 16, from verse 15 to 20. The book, the gospel of Mark, verse 16, from verse 15 to 20. And I read, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these shines will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will, be, and they will recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Verse 20, which is the last verse. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mark 16, 15 to 20. That's our text for this morning. Our memory verse is from 1 Corinthians 9.16. It says, For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Amen. I want us to look at that point that says, Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. If we look at our text for this class, it says, Go ye into the world. It is a direct command. The Bible did not say, I appeal to you. I plead with you. I want to encourage you. No, it is a clear instruction. Go ye into the world. And do what? And preach the good news. Friends, how many of us are keeping this command? How many of us are living up the expectation? Go ye. Praise the Lord. Our last introduction. Shortly after the baptism and witness experience of Jesus Christ, his early ministry started with the preaching of the gospel and ended with the commissioning of the disciples for the same assignment. We consider the Mark 1, 9-14 and Mark 28, 18-20. Without doubt, this must have been an issue topmost in the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ for all generations. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me draw a bit of analogy for us to see what it means when the Bible says, Woe, woe is me. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Now, according to our memory verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 19, chapter 9 from verse 16. Now, if you look at the account of Jonah, in John chapter 1 from verse 1, you see something very, very important there. Let's look at that text before we continue. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Now, this is Brother Jonah. God gave him a clear instruction just like he's telling us today to go ye and preach. He told Jonah to arise and go to Nineveh. 
and preached to them. But alas, what did Jonah do? Jonah took off. He looked for a way of escape. Bible records that he went to Joppa on his way to Tashish. Now, that word Joppa, that town Joppa is quite remarkable in the Bible. That town Joppa is quite remarkable. If you look at the account of Dokas, Tabitha, that was where Dokas came from. The popular Dokas that had good deeds even made the widows to cry unto God to bring her back to life. That same Joppa was where Cornelius was praying and God revealed to him that they should go and get someone, Peter. Peter was praying in Joppa. Alas, Peter, Peter listened to that instruction and that brought about salvation of brother Cornelius. But brother Jonah, on his own, he took off looking for a way of escape. But something might have happened. Jonah en route to Tashish. The Bible records that there was turbulence on the sea, such that people were afraid for their lives. They had to cast Lot, and Lot fell on Jonah. Now, when there was turbulence on water, everybody was scared. But Jonah, knowing what he was doing, he went, he went inside the ship to the bottom part and was asleep. Imagine someone sleeping. When there was crisis, he was deep asleep until they had to cast Lot and Lot fell on him. Friends, you cannot run away from God, no matter how hard you try to run. Do not try to escape, he tried to run, but eventually he could not run further. Now what happened? They had to throw him. They had to throw Jonah out. Luckily for him, Luckily for him, a shark swallowed him. Now, how would it have sounded that in our climb, I believe that Jonah was married when he was asked to go on that assignment, but he decided to take off. How would it have sounded that Jonah would tell his wife, eh, because I was running from the Lord and a fish swallowed me and after three days he vomited me. It would sound so ridiculous. But God has a way of achieving whatever he said to do. This same Jonah, after the people permitted him, he still went back and did the assignment and for the assignment. To the glory of God, the Bible records that that town, they repented and God spared their lives. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That gives you a clear example where, where when Paul says that in 1 Corinthians 9, 16, Woe is unto me. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. If not for the grace of God upon the life of brother Jonah, that would have been the end of his life. Because I recall that when he was in the belly of the fish, he had to cry to God for mercy. And God listened and spared his life and gave me a second chance. Praise the Lord. Friends, are you like brother Jonah today? They are trying to take off. Even when God has given the instruction, go ye into the world and preach the good news. Are you trying to run away from that assignment? God will give us the grace to hear that command in the name of Jesus. Let us look at our outline for today. The outline number one. A must for all believers. A must for all believers. Now, verse 8, Father, says, Why the gospel? Why the gospel? Praise the Lord. Why the gospel? Now, the first point here says, the Lord commanded all believers to preach the gospel. We can see that in Matthew 28 from verse 18. Why he said, Up has been given to you. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's according to Matthew 28 from verse 18. I read, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Provide them in the name of, in the, name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things whatever I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always even to the end of the world. Praise the Lord. Why the gospel? The second point I have here is the gospel is the power and wisdom of God. We can see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 24. Then the third point here it says, failure to preach the gospel attracts a cause. 
Failure to preach the gospel attract a cause. That's from our memory verse for today. But let's go back to it again. 1 Corinthians 9.16 1 Corinthians 9.16 It says, For if I preach the gospel, I have nothing to boast of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yes, woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. Woe is me. That's the Bible language. Woe is me if I do not preach the gospel. Like the story we shared at the inception about Brother Jonah that wanted to run away from that assignment. I got to a point that he was swallowed by fish. And in the belly of the fish, he cried to God for mercy. I had a, a second chance. Friends, you might not be lucky to have a second chance like Brother Jonah. Let's see the instruction while we have the time. Praise the Lord. I have another point here. Preaching of the gospel is a mandatory duty to all believers. It is a command to all believers. We can read 2 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 2 and Acts 18.26. The gospel is the avenue through which all human race, souls, can be saved. Through the gospel, sinners, people who are weary and souls who are perishing, can repent and obtain everlasting life. Praise the Lord. The Lord is the central message of the gospel. Now, why preaching the gospel? You're not trying to exalt yourself. You're not trying to showcase what you've achieved. Christ is the message. I say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That is your message. That Christ died for us so that we'll be saved and not end up in hell. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one who pleads our cause with God the Father. The blood of Jesus of the Lord Jesus Christ cleanses from all sins. Believers in the Lord Jesus must therefore preach the gospel and win souls to the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Run away from that curse, as we see in 1 Corinthians 9:16. I say, Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. Friends, none of us will want to experience that part. No. You know, most times we try to quote the scripture, we look at the parts that favors us. You see, human beings, they will always look at the promises. The good side of the Bible, they, uh, they know how to quote Deuteronomy 28, all the blessings there, forgetting that there's a condition for every blessing. Like we always see, people that run from they will tell you terms and conditions apply. Before you can win the promo, before you can qualify to even win the promo, you must meet the terms and conditions. But here, most of us, we don't want to keep the terms. We simply want to enjoy the blessings, the benefits. God will help us in Jesus' name. Go ye, a clear instruction. What are you doing today? What are you doing today? The world has gone forth. What is your response to that instruction? Are you giving excuses, reasons why you must not do it? Friends, you don't need to travel far for you to preach the gospel. Some of us might be saying, no, I can't leave my job and go to Bonn. No, I can't leave my job and go to Porak or to go and preach. We agree. But start from your immediate area of influence. People around you, do they know Christ? Do they know Christ? Your immediate environment. Your friends, your colleagues at work, the people on your streets, do they know Christ? Praise the Lord. It is not until you leave your base to go to another location before you can preach Christ to people. You can preach Christ to people from where you are, from an immediate environment. Praise the Lord. Most times, some of us, we want to put up a very strong front that, yes, I'm a Christian, I'm a, I'm a believer because I come to church. But in your place of work, your place of assignment, do they know you as a Christian? Praise the Lord. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. A very clear instruction. Go ye into the world and preach the good news. Don't be like Brother Jonah. Brother Jonah had a second chance. You and I might not be so privileged to have that second chance. But God will give us the grace to heed this instruction and adhere strictly to it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Continue with our outline. 
Requirement for the assignment. Now, requirement for the assignment. You see, we there is this popular, popular line that we always quote that God does not call the equipped, but he equips the call. You might be say, you might be saying, Yes, I am not yet ready, I am not yet ripe, I'm not yet matured for the ministry, I'm not yet ready to preach the gospel. Yes, you might not be ready, but God who has called you has already prepared you ahead of time. He makes provision for every mission that's committed unto you. The provision is already there. It's not left for you to take a step of faith. And he will crown all your efforts with resounding success. God will give us the grace to hear this instruction in the name of Jesus Christ. Requirements for this assignment. Number one, divine wisdom. Number one, divine wisdom. Praise the Lord. Requirement for this assignment. Divine wisdom. Let us go to the book of James chapter 1 from verse 5 to 8. Let us see what the Bible says there about divine wisdom. Amen. James 1 from verse 5 to 8. It says, if any, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and obedeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Praise the Lord. The point I'm bringing is from verse 5. said, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abraded not, and it shall be given unto him. During the course of this preview, brother asked a question. It was like, yes, we need to be equipped for those assignments. But as a fresh believer, how is he going to go out and preach? Now, he doesn't know what to preach. Praise the Lord. Now, the answer to that question is that once God calls you, Forget what you will do. He has already called you. He has made provision for that mission. Once you open your mouth, He will tell you what to say. For the Bible says that the Spirit, the Spirit of God will, will lead us into it. He will tell us what to say. Praise the Lord. Now, for example, the man that was healed by Peter at a beautiful gate, he's been there for so long that people knew him as a leper, as a lame man. He has been there. They knew him as such, praise the Lord. Now, I want to believe that they must have tagged him, the lame man at the beautiful gate. What an irony. I remember that the gate was beautiful, but that's a man whose life was not beautiful at the beautiful gate. Praise the Lord. Now, as soon as he was healed by Peter, the Bible records that the same man that has been there for years, stood up. He did not just stand up. He was limping. He was jumping up. Friends, there is no gospel more than that because he will tell people his stories that this is the person that healed me. That same Jesus that was sent to us for us to be saved. He was the one that healed me. That's a very big testimony, a great testimony. Praise the Lord. So once, that's why the Bible says that we overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Your testimony alone is also a strong instrument of the gospel. Praise Master Jesus. The second requirement for the assignment after divine wisdom is a compassionate heart. A compassionate heart. A heart that cares for the Lordship. Praise the Lord. Let's look at uh, the Bible text for this, Matthew 9, from verse 36. Matthew 9, 36 says, But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them, because they are weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Praise the Lord. A compassionate heart. A compassionate heart. A heart that will cringe. A heart that will feel bad. A heart that will look after the Lordship. You know, some of us, we see people who do things that we know that this thing they are doing will lead them to damnation. To us, it doesn't matter. But if we genuinely care for such souls, you have compassion for them. 
You will try to reach out to them to win their souls to the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. A compassionate, that, that is the second requirement. The third requirement is the power of the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to chapter 4 from verse 31 to have an understanding of what happened afterwards. Acts 4, 31. It says, And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled, assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power the apostle gave witnesses, witness of, 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 to the revelation of Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them all. Nor was there anyone among them that lacked, for all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold, and laid them at the apostles' feet, that it is well to each one as they had need. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Talking about the apostles apostle of Jesus Christ, recall that these same people, heavily led by Brother Peter, was the same person that the Bible calls a maid servant, that a girl, little girl, simply told him, Yes, you are one of them. And he denied, he denied Jesus completely. Completely denied Jesus. Because at that point, he was still working on his own strength. But I recall that in Acts of that when the Holy Spirit came upon them, those same Peter stood up and preached. That same timid Peter, in one sermon, about 3,000 souls were converted. Ask yourself, how was the, 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 the crowd that came for that meeting? For in one thing for 3,000 souls to be saved, a whole 3,000 souls saved in one meeting. This is the same person that was timid, that denied Jesus. Because at that point, he was walking in his own strength. When the Holy Spirit came, everything changed. He became a new man entirely. That is why part of the requirement we have here is the power of the Holy Spirit. Friend, for you to preach the gospel and preach it well effectively, you cannot do it on your own. You need the Holy Spirit to, to empower you, to strengthen you, to guide you. And leading to all truth. God will give us the grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Second outline here says, The message is simple. The message is simple. The first message, Jesus is the, mor Jesus is the moral, which was from beginning, but according to John 1 from, from verse 1 and also verse 14. All souls belong to God. All souls belong to God. And all souls have also sinned. Praise the Lord. Also have also sinned. The Bible says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Praise Master Jesus. The fourth point we have here, that every soul that confessed and repents from their sins will obtain mercy. Every soul that confess their sins will obtain mercy. Let's go to Proverbs 18 from Proverbs 28 from verse 13. Proverbs 28 from verse 13. Amen. Proverbs 28 from verse 13. He says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whosoever confesseth and forsaketh and forsake them shall have mercy. Praise the Lord. Every soul that confess and repent from their sins will obtain mercy. The fifth point. Those who confessed and repented from their sins will obtain the gift of eternal life. Those who confess their sins and repented from their sins, definitely they will obtain the gift of eternal life. The blood of Jesus Christ alone is the means by which the sins of the whole world can be washed away. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. Amen. Friends, having looked at the requirement of this assignment. We've also looked at why we must heed this order. They always tell us, obey the last order. It says, go ye therefore and preach. Let us not be like Brother Jonah, who wanted to run away from that assignment. 
God had mercy on him, he had a second chance. You and I might not be so lucky to have a second chance. God is telling us now that now that we have the opportunity to go and preach, friends, what are the things that are hindering you from hearing this instruction, hearing this command? May God in his mercy take away every hindrance and give us the grace to go and preach the gospel as commanded in the name of Jesus Christ. We are not saying that you must go to far places. You can start from your area of influence, your immediate environment, your compound, your family and friends, your place of work and start from there and preach the gospel. God will give us the grace to be so winners in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. God will give us the grace, the enablement, the power to go forth and preach. And as you do so, God will bless us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In conclusion, if the Lord Jesus Christ saw the preaching of the gospel as unavoidable, then believers therefore have no excuse whatsoever. He has promised that we will do greater works that according to John 14, 12, and that he will be with us always, that Matthew 28, 20, till the close of time. He has given the instruction, he has already committed that he will be with us, always, to the very end. Praise the Lord. We pray this day that God in his mercy will give us the grace to obey his command in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Master Jesus. But if you have any question regarding this topic, feel free to drop the question in your WhatsApp group. WhatsApp group. And for those who are watching us online, you can also drop your question or your, com or your comment in the chat box. We also follow and respond accordingly. God will give us the grace, the enablement, the power to do, to obey this, this instruction and go forth and preach the gospel, even as God has commanded in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that God in his mercy, we take away every hindrance, every limitation, everything that might stand as, a, uh, uh, as an obstacle to us fulfilling this, this task, that God in mercy will take them away in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus, might them will pray. Amen. Let us begin to thank this God for his mercy, for his privilege, for us to hear this gospel, for us to hear this message. Let us also pray for the grace even to heed this command, for the grace even to obey this command in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we receive the grace of God to obey this command. Whatever it is that might stand as a hindrance, as a distraction, we reject completely in the name of Jesus Christ. We receive the grace to go forth and preach the gospel when that has commanded. And as we do so, O God, your mercy and your grace will be upon us. Thank you, Father, and our God, for only you are worthy. For in Jesus, precious name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's been an awesome time in God's presence. We are glad for how God has helped us. We return to him all the praise and glory. Next lesson is lesson 41. We'll be talking about Christian missionary. As we prepare ahead of time, we pray that God in his mercy will keep us rapturable. Till then, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. See you next week and God bless you. Have a nice week. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm.